Joining me today is Dr. Wayne Lesperance, a professor of political science at New England College, and we're here to talk about the upcoming election, now that the primary dust has settled. Wayne, the primary dust has settled, and it actually took a while for it to settle, didn't it? It did. Uh, it, we, were, we were well into the late of the night trying to sort through who actually got the uh, gubernatorial nod on the Republican side, and uh, lots of drama there, and, and in CD1 as well, there was uh, for it a while. It went on and on and on. It did. So yes, this dust is settled. We know who the candidates are, and we're, gonna, we're, we're now shifting to the general election. And uh, the parties have been having their unity breakfast? They had one yesterday morning, yes. The Republicans and the Dems, and right. uh, so my, uh, my question, um, are, is the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, with the various wings, and it's clear, their camps there, are they really united? Boy, that's a that's a great question. Uh, I certainly would say, based on their breakfast yesterday, it sure seems that way. But if you look back just a little bit to the history of this cycle, you have a sitting United States senator that calls for the resignation of a sitting United States congressman, uh, Frank Ginta, uh, in this case, uh, at a unity breakfast together. That that I'd like to believe folks can work past those things, but I, I imagine there are probably still some some hurt feelings. On the Democratic side, I think it was less of a, a gap to bridge. Uh, I think they, they get that they have a party that has a progressive wing and then a more um, moderate wing. Um, but they didn't, if you followed this primary cycle, it was one of the most civil debates, discourses, not a lot of personal attacks, not a, none at all really uh, between the Democrats. So I think they went a long way during the primary process to heal any wounds that might be there because of Bernie and Hillary and all that. On the Republican side, I think those wounds are still pretty fresh. So um, I, I don't know if you've looked into the tea leaves polling or that. It, are the Bernie voters, um, are, are, are we likely to see them come out? Well, that, that's a good question. The polling data tells us that overwhelmingly they are finding their way to Hillary Clinton, right? And so by, by extension, I would say that means they're finding their way to Democratic candidates up and down the ballot. Um, but the one thing that you really can't get an accurate sense of, other than what people say, uh, is will they turn out on Election Day? And what we know about Bernie's, he brought a lot of first-time voters to the polls, a lot of young people. That's a demographic that typically doesn't turn out in a big way. Uh, so what Hillary Clinton and what all Democrats around the state have to focus on is their get-out-the-vote effort. How do we get those young folks uh, who are very excited about Bernie Sanders to stay excited, stay engaged, and actually cast a vote on Election Day? That's a big challenge. So I imagine we'd see a lot of action on the college campuses this fall. Absolutely, and I know that uh, all of the campaigns are doing outreach. You have from college Repo Republicans and college Democrats, but other kinds of organizations doing events. We had Hillary and uh, 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 Trump folks here on campus for our Connections Fair, just trying to sign students up to be volunteers. So I think they get the importance, um, not, not just of their voting, but young people are free labor. They're willing to go out and volunteer and work really hard for a candidate they believe in. And so you've got both campaigns, campaigns up and down the ballots really, trying to tap into that resource, uh, and I think college campuses are going to be buzzing in the next six weeks, 55 days, I think, uh, until Election Day. Um, so yeah, campuses are going to be uh, ground zero for a lot of uh, activity. Um, you know, one other thing on the turnout issue. The turnout was relatively light this oh, last yeah. Tuesday. It was. Um, is that just an anomaly, or does that uh, foreshadow a light turnout in November. Right. Uh, Pri primary elections generally have lower turnout. Primary elections that don't involve a presidential candidate have very low turnout. Um, so we were true to form there. But even in that context, I think we were lo low in uh, voter turnout in the cycle. One of the things that political scientists want to try to understand is, is does that reflect something unique about that particular day, um, this cycle, or is this something bigger? Is this voters, uh, does this reflect voters sort of throwing their hands up and saying, I've had enough, I'm frustrated, I'm not going to go participate, I'm not going to turn out. There's a lot that could be done to encourage voter turnout that we choose not to do as a, as a country. Um, but when you see a, a dip downward, you've got to ask yourself, what's happening? What's the dynamic? Is this an anomaly, or does this does this uh, does this speak to something else that may be happening out in the electorate? So we got about 15 seconds left. Uh, a lot, or a little, uh, big turnout, small turnout, average turnout this fall. If you were to bet right now. Because it's a presidential, I think it's going to be a very good turnout. A big turnout. A big turnout. Does that favor Republicans or Democrats? I think it favors Democrats. Okay. All right, we're out there. When we return, we're going to focus on the Senate race. You'll want to stay for that.